Hello everyone, this is Kurode giving you a shoutcast and game one in another Korean King of the Hill clan war series. We'll see what's going to go down here. Envy's Max Ed spawning as the red Protoss player on the bottom left hand side of the map. Meanwhile, next is Teja spawning as the blue Terran. So Terran versus Protoss. And once more, since this is going to be a King of the Hill clan style, um, or clan style King of the Hill, I'm not going to be placing the player's name in the actual title. So in, I won't give be I won't be giving any spoilers on who wins or who loses. Just don't pay too close attention in terms of the in terms of the YouTube picture, and you won't see the races either. Now, Terran versus Protoss here on Cloud Kingdom, a pretty standard matchup. Um, I have got to see a little bit more games here on Cloud Kingdom. And it pretty much plays up like your standard Terran versus Protoss. We'll see what um, we'll see what the Terran player really tries to open up with. Terran players generally have a little bit more flexibility in terms of what they're trying to go for. Protoss players, on the other hand, you really need to scout them out sometime after, um, sometime around their gateway where it, when it's established and their Cybernetic core is warping in, to see if they're going for a four gate, how much gas they have and how much energy they have on their nexus. What you're really trying to keep track of is how much energy they have saved so you know where they're gonna be spending that chrono boost. If they're not spending that chrono boost, you know that they're either gonna be trying to, um, you know, chrono boost out that warp gate tech or perhaps try to chrono boost out some units somewhere else on the map, perhaps a little bit of a proxy play. Now, taking a look at the Terran, there is no refineries yet. So it looks as though Nextasia will be going for a fast command center. So he should be establishing a command center either here or perhaps inside his own base and then trying to get two to three Marines, using those Marines to fend off and then also establishing a bunker here. Now, coming in over from Maxed, Maxed is actually, or yeah, Maxed is actually going for double assimilators right now, interestingly enough. And he's gonna be getting very, very heavy on gas. Now with this, he can either one gate expand, or he could perhaps be trying to go in the tech. That's some of the versatility in Protoss. One gate expand normally means a high sentry count for a little while. And because sentries are so gas intensive and don't cost that many minerals, they can still afford to expand at that moment. Now taking a look so far, we are going into that command center at the natural expansion. You can see back over here, Marines are being trained. One Marine trying to hold the front. There is gonna be a bunker now established as I believe the SCV was able to gather some minerals of his own and take a good look at what actually is going on inside the base. One thing that Max said is doing that some players do try to utilize, the fact that there is only two probes on each of these assimilators. There is no diminishing returns when you are harvesting off of two assimilators. So you actually get a little bit more gas ratio wise than if you had a three on each assimilator. So um, yes, that's gonna, nope, sorry. I will have to decline that and yeah. Yeah, so here we go. So just the two and one now. So we'll see what's gonna be happening here. Perhaps the probe will go back on gas as we are going into those sentries, as I mentioned earlier. One zealot here, one probe sitting off over here. There are four marines in a bunker. We should be getting two more barracks as well. And I'm surprised that um, the Terran player is not going for a second refinery. Normally, uh, Terran players like to double, uh, double gas when they are setting up their double barracks in order to get the tech labs, get the reactors, get the proper add-ons, and also not slow down their overall um, overall tech path. Max said looks to perhaps apply some pressure early on. You can see two more gateways will be warping in. Warp gate tech has now been completed. So warp gates will be able to apply a little bit of pressure, perhaps not all that much unless the sentries are able to really get down a lot of force fields and shut down that bunker. Zealots now making their way over. Sentry making their way over as well. We are getting more and more Zealots. The Nexus is already up for Maxed. Maxed should have a slightly larger army at this time. Yes, he does have a slightly larger army. It will really come down to how effective this bunker is. One Stalker going up, like a, going up against a couple Marines there. The Stalker could just trade damage um, on shields for damage on hit points as the Marines are now trying to make their way out. Oh, there you go, the Marines battling up against the stalker the stalker did get some nice hits there as there is now a marauder in that bunker 
which will make it a little bit harder as the Marauder now has a range of 7, meaning that the Stalker will take damage well before it gets within range of that bunker. Also with Concussive Shell, that Stalker will not be able to retreat nearly as effectively and this looks very, very nice here as oh, in comes a large group of units. The sentries are a little bit far behind and in comes some SCVs. The Marauders are inside the bunker and here we go. There are, there is repairing onto that one bunker there. The bunker now going to fall as the Marines are backing off. SCVs are trying to battle it up. A lot of SCVs have been taken down and Max said looking very strong right now. Going to be able to clean up this expansion and perhaps even get the Orbital Command. All the SCVs are now up on the high ground. And the Orbital Command has taken a lot of damage. There you go. We are now going into a factory. The Orbital Command down to about a thousand hit points. As Max said, deals a lot of damage there. Zealots now once again trying to charge up. Our, there is no bunker up on the ramp there. And this play is absolutely spot on by the Protoss. A nice timing on that attack to deal a lot of damage. And now with that proxy pylon here... And yeah, with this proxy pylon here, he can still reinforce. Now, this is where Max said has to be calculating and figure out what he wants to do. He cannot continue to siege his opponent as his opponent will be able to get larger and larger units and be able to break out of this containment. He just needs to hold it as long as he can and deny this expansion as long as he can and without losing any of, any of his uh, stalkers, zealots, and sentries. You can see that there's a starport now coming into play. Reactor now coming online. But Max said sitting very comfortably with a 44 over 39 harvester advantage. And more importantly, less diminishing returns. You can see that there's a fair amount of probes at the natural expansion. And fair amount of probes at the main base. Meaning that these probes are, are mining higher efficiency than these SCVs because... Too many SCVs are just trying to go between Mineral Patch and Mineral Patch, trying to look for a Mineral Patch that could be mined out from. Now, Max said, has to be careful though. He can see that there is an Orbital Command here. There is one Marine now down. Uh, the Orbital Command could get pushed back once more. And now that we finally have an Observer in play, Max said will be able to figure out what he wants in terms of overall strategy. Nicely done there. One observer on the high ground. The bunker, no, not salvaged. Two, two force fields preventing the Marines and Marauders from really gathering around and still brilliantly playing this. And this is going to be a problem for and, and Teja. Teja cannot move down. If he tries to move down, the sentry will split that army there. You can see that the observer was destroyed. And now with that observer destroyed, I believe the army will be retreating, knowing that he th cannot pay absolute close attention to that expansion um, or to his army at all times, deciding to retreat, regroup, and perhaps come back with immortals and zealots with charge. A third command center now being established by Teja, the Terran player perhaps should have gotten this expansion earlier. So at least he would have a, a, another orbital command and try to macro up a little bit further. He is not far behind in terms of overall supply count, 90 versus 99. But the harvester count and the income should be a different story. You can now see that the SCBs are back over here, able to mine more effectively. And I'm a little curious as to why Max had never established another expansion. He could have tried to take this expansion here, or at least started it to buy him some time as we now have an Archon coming in and beautifully done. Force field now just completely trapping many of those units there. And now the Archon, all it needs to do is push its way through. This expansion should have been established already. You can see that Max Head is floating on 600, 700 minerals. There you go. Now finally establishing that expansion and getting two pylons as well as one Marine going to come in and perhaps try to shoot down this probe. The probe going to most likely fall here. There it goes. But the Zealots are going to finish it off. The Zealots do not have charge yet. It is. I thought they had re researching charge. Nope. Cool down. There you go. Going to go ahead and charge after that one Marine there as we now see a large group of um, of what stalkers, sentries, and zealots once again try to do a bit of an engagement. Proxy pylon has already been established. High Templars are in play. The High Templars could merge into a Dark Archon, but it doesn't look like it. Psionic Storm will be researched instead. As the Proxy pylon here will quickly scout out that an expansion is trying to be established. 
Marines and Marauders. The Marines are upgraded 1-1. One, one. We'll see what's happening with the Zealots. They are upgraded 1-1 one, one as well. One proxy pylon on the high ground will fall. 135 versus 129. Is it going to be enough? Next Tejar doing a great job utilizing these Marines and dealing a lot of damage here. And I'm really surprised that Maxed has not gone for Colossi. And Colossi would really help. It would at least force Viking production away from Metavax. The Archons are also here as well but the archons are very effective but their range is rather limited you want to be able to have high range across multiple units zell is now charging in archons trying to push their way in psionic storm should be raining down from the heavens in just a moment and the marauders and the marines are pretty much stuck on the wrong side of this force field wall Ooh, i'm surprised that another round of force fields are not placed down as we now see this orbital command taking a lot of damage very very quickly is it going to start to burn I believe so. Yes, it is already burning now. Already down to 300 some odd hit points. SCVs need to come over to repair as we now see the Marauders once again getting caught on the wrong side of a force field. The Zealots, um, the Stalkers trying to engage and now the Metabats. Oh, feedback across a couple of them, taking many of them now, but there are now ghosts in the army of Tasia. Max said does have a very strong um, supply advantage now, a 13 supply advantage. He also has higher tech with Archons and High Templars, but it will really come down to who is able to utilize those spellcasters more efficiently. Ghosts versus High Templars, it's whoever acts first normally wins. Photon cannons being established over here. I like this play, making it very difficult to try to try and hold that. Max said is uh, trying to get up his third base, but it looks like it will get cleaned up rather easily. And now we see the Archons, Stalkers, and Zealots push in as well. SCB is now trying to run away. It's going to turn into a base race here. Marines and Marauders are all up on the high ground. One Immortal looks like it will take a lot of damage here as probes are now getting destroyed. Marines and Marauders running rabid inside the natural expansion here. This is not looking good. As Max said, is currently behind in terms of supply. You can see that the, uh, the key tech buildings, two key tech buildings have fallen. And Max said, all of a sudden... In a very, very bad situation, he is just too far away from home, unable to get back all of these narrow choke points without destroying those destructible rocks. Another forge gets taken down. Marines and Marauders now running inside the main base, perhaps going to take down all of the pylons. And with all the pylons gone, all the warp gates will be non-operational and unable to train up any more units. We'll see what's going to be happening here. All the warp gates are pretty much down. Yes, all the warp gates are now down. No more units can be trained as we now see high ground advantage. Very important. There is a ghost that got feedback. One ghost or one high templar does get destroyed here. And we'll see what's going to be happening next. We still see that next Tasia has a decent amount of units inside his main base. And now there's not many probes anywhere else. Zealots hiding off over here. Photon cannons here. Are they going to be able to charge up is the key question. No Colossi. And without those Colossi, that is just going to be way too much. A size form is continuing to hit across Marines and Marauders. The Marines and Marauders have room to retreat, though, as they are just going to continue to fight back against more and more units. And Nexus does get taken down as the Metavax will be able to now do a tactical retreat. All of those Metavax pretty much in the red. And this is huge. Next Tasia now bringing back the only one full Metavax. And this is going to cause more problems for Max Head as Max Head cannot afford to lose all of these production buildings. Meanwhile, you can see the Zealots and Marines trying to engage over here, but there are simply enough SCVs to take a lot of that damage. Next Tasha could be doing another maneuver in just a moment as the Marauders and the Marines are continuing to take down more and more units here. Right now, Next Tasia has the, the strong advantage and a, right now a 35 supply advantage here as the Marines SCVs doing their job. SCVs taking a lot of that damage and also getting healed back up. Probes also joining in on the fight. There are photon cannons here. That is not a good choice as Psionic Storm needs to be rained down. No feedback across the Metabats. The Metabats are pretty much um, useless now. And who's going to win out? It is 95 versus 58 as the Archon now pushing back this Orbital Command once more. Orbital Command down to 44 hit points. More feedback coming in. The Marines have to be very careful. One Archon now down. Only one Archon left. Marines continuing this push. The Archon down to 92, 87 hit points or shield points. And Max said, says GG. So a great game here. Max said able to apply some early pressure early on, but unable to hold on to it as the Terran player able to sit inside his base and eventually break back out, catching Maxed out of position. 
that is something a Protoss player cannot allow, especially with observers. The map also had several Zelnaga watchtowers, which I do not believe were utilized all too well. And Max said, attacking at the wrong time, Marines and Marauders coming in, taking down the pylons, stopping the reinforcements, and then next Heja able to claw his way back into this game. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Hope you guys enjoyed game one in this series.